I just want to show a close-up of the horses. Here's Black Beauty. I put a bandana on her. And there's a separate video tutorial for the bridle and the saddle. And there's also, if you like the freeform crochet, I'll give the link for that on my blog, www.helenmaycrochet.com. And you can add as much or as little freeform crochet that you want for your horse. If you don't want to buy the eyes, the safety doll eyes, I also show how to make the eyes yourself. These are 40 millimeter glitter eyes on the Black Beauty. This is also a bandana that I got for this one. And I also show how you can add beads to the bridle if you want beads. You can also make your horse into a unicorn so you can have fun with the colors and the designs like this one. And again she has 40 millimeter glitter eyes. You can have fun with clips for the hair, you can braid the hair. If you like the way I added beads to the hair, I also show how to do that. It's just a fun way to make your horse stand out. I also placed a bead in the freeform crochet. So this is freeform crochet that I added to the unicorn. They also have fun hair clips that you can add with different colors. I chose the blue one. And you can actually remove these clips and wear them in your own hair if you wanted to the child's hair. And then on the back I also show how to place a zipper so there's an opening on the back. And you can put some fun things inside. This one is just a unicorn pencil holder. And then I also have some unicorn erasers that are adorable. The head came off of that one. Let's see if I can find another one. So they have the hair and the the unicorn head and the body all come apart. So of course you just have to make sure that it's age appropriate because if you get little pieces like this they could be a choking hazard so just keep that in mind. Also the brown horse doesn't have anything on the back so you can make them without the zipper and also you can make them without the wire inside. So on the unicorn I show how I placed craft wire in her body and her legs and then the best one that I made was the Black Beauty. She has not only does she have wire in her body, but I have some other things that I put in her body that worked really well. So Black Beauty is the most sturdy. It takes a little bit of effort, but I can actually get her to stand on her legs. The Unicorn, she's a little bit sturdier than the brown horse, but she can't stand on her own. She can just prop herself up with her front legs. So you can see how they all prop up pretty easily on their front legs. The Black Beauty is the most sturdy out of them all and again I'm going to show you how I made her really sturdy and that you have to decide if you want to use craft wire in it or not. For very small children I wouldn't recommend using the craft wire. You can always make it like the brown horse. The brown horse also props up pretty well. It's just that her front legs may um, bulge a little bit but as you can see they're not bulging that much they look pretty good and then the unicorn has some craft wire in hers and she props herself up pretty well so on the back of Black Beauty I decided to go ahead and add a zipper to hers as well so it's hidden behind the saddle and on the inside of Black Beauty I just have some little horses collectible horses inside so it's kind of fun you can put hidden, it's a hidden pouch on the horse that you can add or you can just leave it without the zipper, whatever you decide to do. And then the zipper just gets covered up with the saddle. So here I just wanted to show you all of the unicorns together. That way you can get an idea of the size differences. There's a separate video tutorial for the medium sized unicorn as well as for the smallest size. The large unicorn measures 28 and a half inches from the floor to the tip of her horn and then from her nose to the back of the unicorn she measures 26 inches. For the medium sized unicorn 
They are 16 and a half inches from the floor to the tip of the horn and they're 16 inches from the front of the foot to the back of the body. The smallest unicorns are only 5 inches tall. So the medium sized unicorn you can leave the body without the zipper on the back but I also show how to put the zipper on the medium sized unicorn in the written pattern. So the written pattern is a paid pattern that will be available on Ravelry. But again, you could also learn how to, I show in the video tutorial, how to place it in the larger unicorn. So you can use the same method that I use for the large unicorn in the medium unicorn if you want to use YouTube video tutorial. And I also just wanted to show my dragons. There's a separate video tutorial for the crochet dra magical dragon. And I just wanted to include them in with the unicorns. That way you can see the size difference with them as well. So the larger magical dragon is about the same size as the medium unicorn size. And then the smaller dragons are in between the medium size and the small one. They're a little bit smaller and fun to make. So again, there's a separate video tutorial for each of these. The legs and arms are movable, as you can see with the pink one and then the blue one is just sitting. For this crochet project you're going to need your four millimeter crochet hook as well as a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle or darning needle. If you're placing a zipper on the back and you like the one that I used, I used this zipper by Coates Eclectic Elements. It's a nine inch or 23 centimeter Here is some more information on the back of the zipper if you're interested. There are a couple ways that you can make the horse's eyes. This is one way that I did it with felt. You can see that I have the black pupil with the sequin. This is an iridescent sequin. And then I have the walnut brown. I have the white glitter felt. And then I have the black glitter felt and then I just used yarn to make the eyelashes. So I have the measurements for each piece of the felt on this download. This is going to be a free download on my blog which is www.helenmaycrochet.com so you'll be able to download this for free on my site. It has all the measurements so you can cut your felt pieces out the felt that I used, this is a glitter felt. This one is by Ecofy. Glitter friendly felt. This is a 9 inch by 12 inch. I also have the white glitter. I just like the glitter look to it. So this is a 9 by 12 inch one that I purchased. And then I've also used from EcoFi Plus Premium Felt 9 inch by 12 inch. This is a walnut brown. So I like the darker brown in the eyes, but you can pick whatever color felt that you want to make your eyes with for your horse. The sequins that I used are Iridescent by Treehouse Studios. It's the round cup. 8 millimeter, so I use the larger 8 millimeter for the large horse. And you can see I have plenty of these, so these will last you a very long time. I use these on my crochet mermaid doll. This is what I use to sew the sequin on. It's a clear, strong jewel. It's used usually to make jewelry, but it works great for um, also sewing your amigurumi eyes. You can see I'm almost out of this one, but this works great for sewing on the iridescent sequin. So you can see that it's going to be a little bit thick, so you're going to need a fairly sharp needle. I needed a sharp needle to get through. I actually used a very thin tapestry needle, but a sewing needle will also work. And for this next one, I'm going to be using 
a sewing needle with some thread, but you could use your jewelry making stretch magic to also sew this all, everything on this eye. This is a 0.5 millimeter and it's also clear, so you need to make sure you buy the clear one. The DMC yarn threader comes in real handy for using the stretch magic or even if you're just using regular thread. For my black thread this time I'm going to be using, this is also by DMC, it's a cotton pearl. This is a black colored thread. Here's some information about this one. It's a black color. But the only problem with this one is you only can use this on the black colored felt. So you're going to need a clear one for the iridescent if you're using the iridescent sequin. Now on the horse on video tutorial I'm also going to show how to use the safety doll eyes. So I'm not going to be sewing on the sequin. I just wanted to show you the eye with the sequin if you wanted to use that for your horse's eye. And again, I'm going to show a close-up of this one. I'll probably show a close-up of this one again when we get to making the horse's eye, but I just wanted to show you. I'm going to replace this walnut brown and the black felt pupil with the safety doll eye. So this will replace that portion. And then I'm just going to use the white and black felt. So those are two ways that you can do it. There's many different ways, but this is these are the two ways that I'm going to show you on video tutorial. The eyes that I used are by Suncatcher Craft Eyes. It's the 40 millimeter, and I'm using the glitter black. She's no longer selling the glitter ones like this one, but she's trying to come up with a uh, method that you could still get that glitter look to it. I guess it's, she has a problem with this shipping well. Mine shipped well, but she's no longer going to be selling these, so you need to find a 40 millimeter equivalent safety doll eye if you want to use this method. For my brown horse, I actually use this cocoa brown. Here's some information about this felt. So this glitter is just from the glitter from my other glitter felt. So it doesn't come with the glitter on it. And again, this is just comparing it to the other brown. And again, that brown is the walnut brown. So if you want an even darker brown, this is the one that I use for my brown horse. For the main color of my horse, I used uh, Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo. And for the horse on video tutorial, I'm using the color Aran. Here's some information about this yarn. For the horse's mane and tail hair, I'm using Lion Brand Yarns Homespun. Here's some information about this yarn. The color is Montana Sky. For the hooves, I'm using Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo. This is my some of my leftover yarn from my brown horse, the large brown horse that you've seen on video already. Here's some information about this yarn. And the color of this yarn is coffee. So it's a really beautiful dark brown color. For the horseshoe and horn, I'm using Patton's Beehive Baby Sport. Here's some information on this yarn. So I've been using this for my other unicorns too. I still have a lot left over. So it works great. You can make multiple of them using this one. And this is my baby gray marl color. Here's some information on this yarn. And again I'm using this on my large horse for the horseshoe. You're also going to need a black colored yarn for the nostrils and the eyelashes. And this yarn is by Mainstays Basic Yarn. Here's some information about this yarn. 
The color is black. So go ahead and get the main color that you're using for your horse. We're going to start with the head, the snout part portion of the horse. So you're going to take and drape the yarn around your four fingers. We're going to make the magic circle. Use your thumb to stabilize and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. And then take your crochet hook, go under those two loops, go ahead and bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So you're going to bring up another loop. Then you're going to make a single crochet. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops for a single crochet. And you're going to make a total of six single crochet into the magic circle. After you finish six single crochet into the magic circle, go ahead and hold the base with your forefinger and thumb, the base of the six single crochet. You can see how I'm holding the crochet hook. Then you have these two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed. You can always close it more later. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then just turn your work so that we can work in rounds starting in the first stitch. So now you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the first stitch on the round. Make sure you get under both loops and you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around. So go into the same stitch twice, make two single crochet into the same stitch go into the next stitch and then make two single crochet into the same stitch and you're going to repeat this all the way around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So now I have 12 stitches in the round and if you need to close the center of your magic circle go ahead and turn your work over and then just gently pull on that loose yarn end on the back and then that will close up your center nicely. Then we're going to start making increase rounds, which means we're going to continue to increase the number of stitches in the round. So go ahead and get your yarn marker. I'm just using one of my scraps of yarn and just place it right where you left off. And we're going to be making a total of five increase rounds. So for the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then just keep repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now you should have 18 total stitches in the round. Then just take and move your yarn marker up for our next increase round. Now for the next increase round you're going to be making one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You should have finished 24 stitches on that last round and then just move your yarn marker up. Then for the next increase round you're going to be making one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. 
So you should have finished 30 stitches on that last round. Now for we have two increase rounds left. The next increase round is going to be one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So you should have had 36 stitches on that last round and now for our last increase round you're going to be making one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now you should have 42 stitches total in the round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up And now you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. So one single crochet into every stitch around, back to the yarn marker. When you get back to your yarn marker, you're not going to remove it, you're just going to leave it in place. And each time you reach your yarn marker, you should still have the same stitch count. 42 stitches, so you're not adding and you're not decreasing the number of stitches in the round. And then you just continue making one single crochet in every stitch and your yarn marker will help you to keep track of the rounds. So go ahead and continue making one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed eight rounds total. So eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So you can see how I finished eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Now you're just going to set this down because we're going to make the nostrils to go on the snout. So now I'm going to show you how to make the nostrils. I've already made one of them. I'm going to show you how to make the second one. So go ahead and get your black yarn and we're going to start with the magic circle just like we did for the snout of the horse then you're going to bring up a loop and then go ahead and make your slip knot then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle so the same thing six single crochet Then you're going to grab the base of the six single crochet. Go ahead and close it. Then you're going to turn your work and you're going to work into that first stitch in the circle. Again, this is just like we did for the snout. You're going to go into that first stitch. Make sure you grab both loops of the first stitch. Then we're going to make a slip stitch. So this part's a little bit different. And we're going to make a slip stitch. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. If you need to, you can turn your work over and close the center of the magic circle. Now you're going to make a single crochet into the next two stitches. So go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. Then you're going to chain one. So go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through the loop for a chain of one, then turn your work, then you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, then you're going to turn your work, so no chain one, you're just going to turn your work, you're going to go into the next stitch. You're going to bring up a loop. 
and then just make a single crochet. Then you're going to turn your work. So no chain one, just turn your work and then slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just put your hook into the next stitch over, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the nostril onto the snout. So you're going to need two of these. So now you want to sew your nostrils in place and you want to make sure that you don't tangle your yarn that you're still crocheting with on the snout. So leave that to the side and use your magic circle as a landmark. Then I just took and counted out one, two, so after the second round is where I placed the circle portion of the nostril and then I angled out. So if you imagine, imagine this as a clock, this is pointing towards one o'clock and then this one is pointing towards eleven o'clock. Make sure that they both nostrils are level and look symmetrical or identical mirror images of each other and then just sew them in place. So just take your tapestry needle and just go in and out sewing the nostril in place. And then just tie a knot on the inside. This is what my nostrils, these are what my nostrils look like after I sewed them on. Now after you get your nostrils sewn on, go ahead and go back to where you left off on the horse's head or snout. Take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and we're going to make one increase round. So for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. And then make two single crochet into the fifth stitch. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have two stitches remaining. Go ahead and just make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. You should have a total of 50 stitches in the round. Now go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of six rounds. So six rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish your five rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you're ready for the next increase round. So go ahead and move the yarn marker right where you left off. And for this increase round, you're going to be making one single crochet into five stitches. And then make two single crochet into the sixth stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And again, you're going to have two stitches remaining. Just make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. So now you should have finished with a total of 58 stitches in the round. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of eight rounds. So eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish your eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, now we're going to make another increase round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. 
and you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches and then make two single crochet into the seventh stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch repeating that pattern all the way around again you're going to have two stitches remaining so go ahead and just make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches you should have 66 stitches in the round then go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for nine rounds. So nine rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So, so far I've finished two rounds of the nine and I ran into this which sometimes you'll run into so it's better not to just leave it. So I'm going to show you what I do to take care of problems like this. So what I do is I just cut it on both sides of the frazzled yarn and then I just dispose of that. Then you just take the two ends and you just tie a knot. And I leave a little bit of a loose yarn end so that the knot will be stronger and less likely to show through on your work. So I usually just do a triple knot. Just make sure that the knot is strong. Then you just resume crocheting and then when you come upon the knot just go right before the knot and sometimes you can pull on the loose yarn ends to kind of pull the knot back into the wrong side of the work and then you just continue on. So it just makes it more secure and you can see how you don't see that frazzled end that would have shown through on your work and you don't know how secure that frazzled knot that was in the uh, yarn would be so you want to go ahead and just get rid of that and make sure that your work is secure, especially for something like this, which takes so much work to put into making. You want to make sure that it doesn't come undone. So I finished the nine rows of one single crochet in every stitch around, and this is how my work looks so far. Here's the nostrils. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave a little loop where I left off. We're going to come back to this you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker now and then just set this aside because we're going to get the eyes made now. So now you're going to need your diagram that shows you the sizes for the different parts for the horse eye and again I have a free download on my blog HelenMayCrochet.com you can download this for free and I'm also going to include this in the written pattern but basically what you're going to do is cut out the pieces or you can just create your own out of cardboard or whatever you want to do but I'm going to cut these out and then I place them into a Ziploc bag and then I also cut the label on it so I can tape this to the outside of the Ziploc bag that way I'll have them again if I ever want to make this pattern I'll have the diagrams already to go. So this is optional way to keep your eyes, the horse eyes. So now I have all of my horse eyes ready. I'm going to show you two different methods. So the completely handmade method, I have all the pieces for those eyes. And then for the eyes that you're going to use your safety doll eyes, the 40 millimeter one, I'm going to show you how to make that one as well. So first, I'm going to show you how to make your eyes completely handmade. So 
the first thing you're going to do is cut out each of your pieces. So you can see that I've cut out the 8 centimeter black portion, then the 6 millimeter white portion, 5 centimeter brown, and then a 3.5 centimeter black portion. And I have my 8 millimeter iridescent cups sequin. So the first thing you want to do is place the glitter side up of the white portion on top of the black portion. And you want the black portion to show a little bit in the front and in the back. And then you want to line it up so that your left eye looks identical or symmetrical to the right eye. Then you're going to take and line up the brown portion. And if you need to trim the brown portion so that more of the white shows, you can do that. You just want to make sure that both eyes, the brown portion, they're the same, same size. You want them to be symmetrical or look the same on both sides. So again, this is my on video, I'll say this is the left eye and then this is the right eye. Then you're going to place the pupil. And again, for the pupil, if you need to trim it, you can. So I made mine very large so that it practically covers the front part of the brown portion. But a lot of the brown portion is showing on the back side. Then you're ready to place the sequin. So for the sequin, I put it in, if you imagine this is a clock, and this is again the left eye. On video I'll say this is how the eye, are, eye is going to be placed on the horse. So this will be left on the video and this will be right. So you want it to be for the left eye Imagine this is a clock, you want it at 11 o'clock, and then for the right eye, imagine a clock and you have it at 1 o'clock. And this is how the horse will be looking at you. So now you're ready to sew it in place. So I would recommend using your clear Stretch Magic bead jewelry cord to sew it. So you just get a small amount. for sewing. And then I have a sewing needle and this sewing needle has a fairly large eye on it. I'm going to take my DMC yarn threader, put it right through the eye. This hook is too big so I'll go to the smaller hook and go right through the eye of the sewing needle. Then I'm going to take and hook my stretchy magic cord. It's clear. You want to make sure you get the clear one. And then to bring it through the eye of the needle, move your DMC yarn threader up and down and then that brings it right through. So now I'm ready to sew. And the reason why you want this thinner sewing needle with a sharp end is because this is really thick since you have all those layers of felt so it's going to be hard to get through it. So make sure everything is lined up the way you want it on the eye and then you're going to come through the back side with your sewing needle and you could even take and move the sequin for now. You know where you want to come out of the eye so you're going to come out through that area. Be careful you don't poke yourself. So make sure you bring the needle in position where you want the sequin. So I'm going to go a little bit lower. So once you know where you want the sequin, that's where you're going to come out with your sewing needle. Then you can take and just place the sequin onto the needle. 
Then you can take and bring the needle through and make sure that you leave enough of the back portion for a loose yarn in for tying a knot. Then you're just going to take and sew, go back through anywhere outside of the iridescent cup and bring your stretchy clear cord through. You can see how it makes it really nice. Now go ahead and just tie a knot on the back. Now with this kind of stretchy cord I usually sew it several, I mean tie it several times. So I would say probably about five or six times. Just because I like to make sure that it's nice and secure. Then you're just going to take and finish sewing. So you just go up on the outside. Make sure you don't poke yourself because this is really sharp. Just go right on the outside of the cup and you're just going to go in and out sewing the sequin to the eye. And then I like to go several times around. Then you can see that the clear cord is barely noticeable. That's why I like to use it for sewing the iridescent cups on. Then you can take and just sew around the rest of the pupil. Then it's ready to be sewn onto the horse. But you can just take and go in and out around the edge of the pupil. And then when you're finished, you just tie a knot on the back. And then I love the clear cord because you can barely see it on the felt. So now I'm going to show you how to use the other method with the safety eyes. The first thing you want to do is just place the white portion on to the black portion and make sure that the glitter side is up if you're using the glitter felt. You can trim the white portion as much as you need to make sure that it's sitting the way that you want. And again, I'm going to say that this is the left eye the way it's looking at you on video or after you sew it on the horse and then this would be the right eye. So here you can see how I placed the safety eye on the felt. This is the safety latch. And you can trim the white portion as much as you want. So I think I'm going to trim a little bit more right here. So here's the one eye. Now I'm going to show you how I did it. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take and place the safety eye where you think you want to place it on the white felt. And then once you like where you think you want to place it, you're going to see where it falls on the felt and then just fold the felt at that point. Then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut an X, just a small, like a millimeter or two cut. And then you're going to take and go like a little triangle. You're going to go in the other direction and cut about a millimeter or two. And then you're just going to open it up. And then you have a cut in the felt and that's where you're going to place the safety eye through. And then you can trim. Make sure that before you place the safety latch on the back, you have it placed where you want it on the felt. Then you just want to make sure that they're both symmetrical. 
and that you like the way the eyes look and now you're ready to sew them onto your horse. I ended up using my clear bead and jewelry cord to sew my horse eyes on instead of the thread but that could be an option so I'll leave this in case you decide that you want to try that. Now placing your eyes on the horse's head is very important so it's going to be important for the look of your horse and it can um, make your horse look really good or really bad if you don't place the eyes right. So for mine I went ahead and just sewed it with the clear. I haven't tried it with the thread at all but it should look good as well. I just decided to go ahead and just use my clear thread cord and for the placement, I want to show you how I placed mine. I used the nostrils as a guide, so the inner aspect of the nostril is where I line up the eyes. And then the other thing is you want to make sure that you're on the right row. So make sure that the point of both eyes is on the right row. And the stitch count between mine, if you like the stitch count between mine, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stitches between this one. So you want to kind of gauge because different yarn styles will give you different looks, so you just have to determine how you want to place your eyes and how far apart that you want your eyes to be. And then for my angle, I made it a slight angle too. So you can see the angle that I have and the top part of that eye is about two rows down from where we finished and it's the same on the other side. So once you have the angle the way that you want it, then you're going to take your sewing needle and you're going to put the clear cord on it the same way that I showed you and then you just take and sew all around the eye and I sew also the white portion so I sewed the white portion and the black portion of the eye and you just go in and out with your sewing needle just making small stitches all around the eye Another option that you can do is you could put the safety latch on the inside of the crochet work instead of on the back side of the felt. So either way, next time I may go through the crochet work if I make another one of these. And then I'm just going to finish sewing all of the felt down so that no edge is able to be brought up. And then all edges of the felt are secure to the crochet work. I wanted to show a close-up of my brown horse's eyes in case you like the placement that I did for those eyes. The stitch count between, I think I have a little bit more stitches between these eyes. And this is what she looks like and then her nostrils and then up towards the eyes. Now after you're happy with the placement of your eyes then you're going to take and go right where you left off and then take your yarn marker place it right where you left off and you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So this part is optional but I'm going to show you how to make the cute eyelashes that go over the eyes. Go ahead and get your black yarn on your tapestry needle and then the first eyelash, make sure that whatever way you make your eyelashes, they're exactly the same on the opposite side. 
Then you're going to come up with your tapestry needle and mine is just this is halfway right here so I'm just a little bit over to the right or medially with my tapestry needle so it's not quite halfway on the eye centered on the eye then you're going to take and go up two rows so straight up two rows and then bring the yarn back through and then tie a knot on the inside then after you tie a knot on the inside you're going to go a stitch over with your tapest tapestry needle from the wrong side and bring the yarn through then you're going to go up three rows so this one counts as one two three Then you're going to go a stitch over again and bring the yarn through. This time you're going to go again three rows, one, two, three, and then go back in. And then make sure that you're lining up with the other lashes, which these are. Then you're going to go a stitch over again but this time you're only going to go up two rows so you want to be a little bit lower one two I'm trying to look on the other side so this one yeah that'll be fine two rows you want to line up your lashes so that they look similar to the opposite side and then I'm going to stitch over again and I'm still going only two rows and then I'm going to make one more for a total of six eyelashes and then tie a knot on the inside So after you're finished with your eyelashes, you're going to go back to where you left off. So go ahead, move your yarn marker up, and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for nine more rounds. So nine more rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish your nine rows of one single crochet in every stitch, we're going to get ready to decrease. So we're going to decrease the number of stitches in the round until we close the head of the horse. So go ahead and take your yarn marker, move it up to where you left off. For the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches. Then you're going to make your decrease stitch. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through all three for a decrease stitch. Then go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So I just finished a decrease stitch and I have two stitches left. I'm going to go ahead and just place one single crochet into each of the two remaining stitches. You should have 58 stitches in the round after that decrease round. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where we left off. This time you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches. and then you're going to make your decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then again you just make one single crochet into each of the two remaining stitch markers and then go ahead and start stuffing the head with your craft stuffing make sure that you shape 
the horse's face. You don't want to overstuff the horse's head. Then we're going to go ahead and continue right where we left off. So far we have 50 stitches left in the round and we're going to get ready for our next decrease stitch and you can always stuff more craft stuffing into the head as you're closing the head. So go ahead and move the yarn marker up and this time you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches before you make your single crochet two stitches together. So I have one single crochet into four stitches. Now I'm going to single crochet two stitches together and then I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around. And again, I have two stitches remaining. Go ahead and just make one single crochet into each of those stitches. You should have had 42 stitches in that last round. Now for your next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And again, you're going to have those two remaining stitches before the yarn marker that you're just going to place one single crochet into each of those stitches. So you should have had 34 stitches on that last round. For your next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. I had 26 stitches on that last decrease round and you can see how the head is slowly closing which is what you want. For your next decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then you make your single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to your yarn marker. So I had 20 stitches on that last round and then now I have one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around. Then you're just going to remove the yarn marker and you're just going to make single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. So just go around making single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. Then you want to take and slip stitch the rest of the way closed. So you skip a stitch go into the next stitch, you yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And you're going to repeat that all the way around until the back of the head is closed. So I'm going to make one more. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury your loose yarn end. Now you're just going to take your tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end, and then you're going to go right in where you finished off and then come out anywhere and then just trim the loose yarn end. Now for the ears, 